All right, so in our ball screw example, where we have a servo motor with a ball screw right here at a five millimeter pitch, we need a way to home that, right? So when we come down to it, we we did some programming. We have some programming that we'll do at MAM and move everything and double check everything through basically a little small state machine. Um, now, when it comes down to it on state, what is it, state three right here, we will actually home the servo motor now obviously we don't have any prox switches or anything like that there's nothing there so we're going to home to torque so when this mech this little bracket again uh, goes against this uh, end point right here and it hits a certain torque level we're going to actually call that home now how do we do that we go into our settings now i already have this preset so just keep in mind i'm going to explain it real quick um, in the homing section of your axis pro properties you, you can change the mode obviously to whatever you want to change it to uh, set your positions uh, in my case I'm going to home and then I'm going to offset back up to 10 millimeters so it's going to go to the very bottom it's going to go to zero and that's going to be zero and then it's going to go up to 10 millimeters now on the scale I have centimeters so basically that's 10 millimeters 20 30 40 50 60 and you can see fourth right um, and that's easily, you know, illustrated by the Starrett ruler, which is more precise. But so I just wanted to actually show that because, again, when it comes down to it, understanding what you're doing is is very very critical. So we went, we changed our our sequence from immediate to switch to marker to switch marker, and obviously, if you use like a switch or something like that, it's going to be like a proc switch. Obviously, we do not have a proc switch. Um, so with that case. I said, well, the only thing we really have the option to do is torque level. So using torque level, what we did is we came in here, we used the torque level, and we said, okay, torque level, which direction do we want to travel? Do we want this bracket to travel upward or downward, right? So I wanted the bracket to, to actually travel, always travel against and hit the, the actual, actual mounting frame where the motor is. Always travel in the reverse mechanism to go all the way down because that's going to be where I want to home the actual pro or the actual servo to. So I chose to do reverse direction, and then you set your torque level, which in my case I put at a very low level, uh, 4.25. Um, it does take a little bit of torque to move this, so that you know you you have to kind of measure that and go off of whatever your your system torque is, right? But if you're using your torque, and that's based upon percentage. Okay, so this keep in mind that's 4.25 percentage of the motor rated torque. All right, so and then I choose my speeds, which in this case I just choose a very slow speed. Um, in this case, I'll just hit apply. Now, I will tell you one key note to this if you're changing a lot of uh, the way you're homing and stuff like that, you need to be offline, even though you can change stuff online, um, especially if you already have the torque met torque level or torque method. The home to torque already set you can change your torque level and stuff like that like if you wanted to change that you could change it online you don't necessarily have to be offline but changing your the the method if you would of your torque or of your homing is, is basically going to be something you kind of want to do offline first so with that said let's go ahead and watch our system so i'm going to start this system i'm going to hit the start push button Okay, so then it's going to come down here and it's going to home this all the way down to the bottom. Now once it homes it, you see it homes to zero and then it's going to go back up to one before it, it travels. Okay, so then it's going to start using the MAMs right here. So in the MAMs, we can actually back this camera up so you can see it a little bit more. See if we can't adjust that a little bit so you can see how that how that movement is so we're going to actually go from uh basically one our we're going our first move is going to be to 200 right so it's going to be up here and then our next move is going to be to 10. so we can easily see that that's going to go to 210 because we moved 200 and then we're coming down here and we're going to come down here and stop at 20. 
so let's see that will come down here and stop right at 20. Now I put this little marker on here so you can easily see, but um, obviously when it comes down to it, you know, without focus, you really can't get that granular detail. But you can see that this is based upon millimeters, so you can easily see that that's how that's working. Our, this is a centimeter, so again, one would be 10 millimeters, two would be 20 millimeters, three would be 30 millimeters, and so forth. So when we get up here in the 20s, that's 200 millimeters. So when this dial comes over here and hits right there, that's 210. So you can see how that's done, right? So with the basic homing functionality done by a torque to home. Now the torque to home again is very a, fun a very functional thing. It is used quite a bit um, in different applications when you do not have any kind of uh, like prox switches or if you don't have controls like a HMI control or a push button home or something like that. So in this case, that's where a torque to home would be, would work, per, uh, per, you know, actually perfect. So the way I have my controls, and let me explain this. I cut it off, right? And no matter where I cut it off, right? So right now, right now, if you look, it's down here in the bottom, okay? No matter where I, I cut it off at, it's going to go, it's going to actually travel to the bottom. So when it starts back up, what's going to happen is going to start through the state machine. As soon as that start button comes on, it's going to come over here. And as soon as it goes to state three, it's going to start the homing process. And then it's going to offset by 10. Now, let's say I didn't want to offset by 10. Okay, let's just, let's just go through that. Let's say I want to keep it at zero. Okay. And then I want to hit apply. So let's see what it does this time. Okay, so it's going to start its homing process. It's going to home. Then it's going to come up and start the actual move. Now at this point, we should move up to 20, which is 200 millimeters. We did. Okay, so at this point, we're going to come back down to 10, which is one millimeter. So keep in mind, that's, that's where we're at. We did, so we're actually traveling and doing exactly what we, we said we would do. Now again, when it comes down to it, let's go up to 200 millimeters right here. And let me move that so you can see that a little bit better. So hopefully you're, you're able to see exactly what we're, we're implementing here. And understand that the home to torque is a very powerful method. But just under, also understand too, you have flexibility in that method too. So this is 200, which is 20. So it moves up perfect. So just to keep in mind, I just wanted to actually show you that and to kind of give you another understanding about how to torque, uh, home to torque if you would, on a Allen Bradley servo. You know, when it comes down to it, these are very flexible. It doesn't matter if you're using SIP motion or it doesn't matter if you're using the Kinetic 6000 which I am using. Um, I do have my sit motion drive coming, so we will be doing more sit motion drive training and stuff like that. But when it comes down to it, um, the supply chain is what it is. So uh, when you order something, you have to wait for, you have the flexibility of, of when things come in. So with that said, hopefully you learned a lot from this video and you got to actually, you know, kind of see how the process works. And you can see how I have everything set up. You can see um, the servo motor and, and this just goes back up to the very top to a bearing and then it goes down to the actual servo motor itself. You can see that. So the servo motor is down there. So with that said, hopefully you learned a lot from this video and we'll see you guys on the next one.